And I'm just going to put a feeler out there. How many of y'all are excited about the word of the Lord on today? Amen. I, I hope you enjoyed yourself on last Sunday because we have been in a series. And we have been in a series, and I entitled this series, Dealing with Defeat. Because I've, I've told everybody, as, as much as we like to win, as much as we want to get the victory, we have to understand because we are on this side of glory, it's just not always going to happen. At some point in time, we're going to have to deal with defeat. And defeat is not as bad as we think it is. We always think defeat is terrible, but this is the thing. It all depends on how you respond to when you experience defeat. So what we've been talking about is how to deal with defeat and how to respond to defeat because that's when we actually get the victory. Amen. And so we, we, we talked about on last Sunday, we talked about the unexpected defeat, the defeats that just seem to come out of nowhere. And we talked about how when we have unexpected defeat, we always want to blame somebody, but I told y'all we can't play the blame game because it makes us bitter. But we have to learn how to pray. We have to learn how to connect to God and talk to God and seek him in those situations. And he'll tell us exactly what we need to get the victory that we are looking for. And so we're going to continue in the Dealing with Defeat series. And what I want y'all to do is I want you to turn with me to the gospel according to Luke. And it's going to come from chapter 5, and what we want to do is we want to read verses 1 through 7. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Now, y'all going to let me take my time with this thing on this morning? Okay, now, I know y'all say that sometimes, but you don't really mean it. <laughs> Can I take my time with this thing on this morning? All right. Because I got two different versions. I got the one that if you won't let me take my time, I got that version. But if you let me take my time, I got the real good version. I hope that's what y'all came for. But Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. This is what it says. It says, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gisenaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Verse 3. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And look at what. Simon says, but Simon answered, and this is verse 5, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. But this is the part that I love. He says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. For just a little while, and y'all told me I had time on this morning. From the series entitled Dealing with Defeat, I have chosen the topic of today's sermon. Jesus knows more than you. Jesus knows more than you. Let us bow our heads. Father, it is time for your word. We need your word. So speak to us right now. Move in this place right now. Let your spirit 
fall fresh in this place so that we can receive your truth. Father, right now, I recognize who I am. And I need someone in this moment that is greater than me. I need someone with the power to change and to impact people. And only you can do that. And I believe that you have chosen to do it through your word. So, Father, allow me to speak with power and with clarity to bring about understanding. In Jesus' precious name I pray and ask all of these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Jesus knows more than you. Y'all, I absolutely love technology. And one of the things that I love about technology is that it makes it so easy for us to access information. When you look at today's time, it's so easy to access information that they say that we live in the information age. Now in the 21st century, if it's information out there, you can get it, and you can get it so easily because when you think about it, all you have to do is you have to get on your phone, you get on your tablet, you get on your computer, or you get on your watches, and you can get all the information that you want to right when you want to. It's not like it was back in the day. You don't have to wait for the information to be delivered to your front door. You don't have to wait. Y'all remember back in the day, I grew up in a time, now I know something about technology now, but I grew up in a time where when a teacher assigned something and you had to do a project, you had to go to the library. Y'all remember that? You had to rush and you had to get to whatever particular encyclopedia that you wanted to get to. Because if that was not there, you had to choose something else. We don't have to do that on today. It's so easy to get information. It's so easy to get information that you can become an expert or at the very least you can become very knowledgeable on anything that you want to. When you look at, at, at YouTube, YouTube has totally changed the game. It used to be where you had to go to college to get the type of knowledge that you can find on YouTube. But now, all you need is a device, all you need is an internet connection, and you get the knowledge and the information that costs somebody thousands of dollars to get. You get the type of information where somebody had to sit in a classroom for years to get. Even when we look at some of the biggest organizations and companies in the world, you don't even need a college degree to work there anymore. Google. IBM, Twitter, all of these things. But, but that comes from our ability to get information and knowledge. It's absolutely crazy how easy it is to get the information. And because it is so easy for us to get information and we can get what we want when we want it, when it comes to information, I feel like I need to tell some people in this place. I feel like I need to tell you something. I need to tell you, you can get all the information that you want. You can become an expert in whatever you want. You can get all the knowledge. You can know how to do it, when to do it. You can know what to do. You can know every single thing. But but I came here to tell you it still does not exempt you from failure. You can get all the knowledge in the world, but it does not exempt you from defeat. Because the world has fooled us that if we get the right education and we get all the knowledge and then the information, we're going to be all right. But they are not telling you the truth. It does not guarantee success. Even when we look here in the word of God, we see Simon. Now, Simon, he didn't have all the technology that we have, but he was an expert fisherman. If it was something that was to be known about fishing, Simon knew about it. He knew what he was doing, and we know that he knows what he was doing because this is what he did for a living. 
This is how he made his money. But with all of that knowledge that he had, he still didn't catch any fish. With all the knowledge that Simon had, he was still washing out some empty nets in an empty boat. He was defeated. And it wasn't from a lack of effort. Simon did everything that he was, was supposed to do from an effort standpoint because he said, he told Jesus, he said, Jesus, we have been fishing all night long. He put in the work, but he didn't get the results. He found himself defeated. And in his moment of defeat, here comes Jesus. And Jesus, while he's being defeated, washing out into nets, Jesus comes and Jesus wants to use his boat. It's almost like Jesus is unaware of what's going on. It's like I tell my daughter all the time, baby, you need to learn to read the room. Because I'd be sitting around, I'd be sitting around frustrated, or, 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 or Eric would be sitting around frustrated, and all of a sudden, Amanda wants to come in there and ask for something, or she want to start playing. And I just tell her, baby, this ain't the time. You need to learn to read the room. I tell her that all the time. So it's kind of like Jesus. Jesus, baby, you got to read the room. It's probably ain't a good time to be asking to use Simon's boat. And if he would have been some of us, and y'all know how we are, we would have told Jesus no. We would have told him no. We would have told Jesus, y'all know how we are, and y'all know I'm telling the truth. We would have told Jesus to get your own boat. I know you want to preach to these folks, but you should have came here prepared to preach to these folks. You need to get your own boat. That's exactly what we would have told him. You, we we would have told him because we're experiencing defeat. We would have told him, you need to be giving me some. And ain't this the all-time classic one? I know you done heard it from your mom and daddy. If you grew up in the right household, you know we would have told Jesus, you ain't tearing up my boat. <laughs> right? Experiencing defeat, I believe a lot of us would have said no. Because what happens to so many people, when you are dealing with defeat and you're losing, you don't really want anybody else to win. When you're dealing with defeat, it can make you downright stingy. You get this crabs in a bucket mentality that if I can't get out, you can't get out either. If I can't get better, you can't get better either. And you just got to the point nobody will win in this situation. And it is hard to help other people win when you are losing. You lose, and it's hard to help other folks come up. But you cannot be like this. Do you hear me on today? You cannot be like this. Don't let defeat keep you from blessing somebody else. Don't let defeat keep you from helping other people and being a blessing and being a giver. Because one of the best things that you can do right in the middle of defeat is be a blessing to somebody else. Because when you are a blessing to somebody else and you are a giver, you might be having a bad day. But when you help somebody else, all of a sudden, you feel good. Helping somebody else get ahead is one of the best Feelings in the world if you ever done it before. And not just that. When you are a giver and you are a blessing when you're struggling, it helps you to see and it helps you to be thankful that I may not have everything I want, but I have everything I need. And I'm struggling, but my God is still good. You need to be a giver because that is what God wants you to do. God wants you to be a blessing. Even if you're experiencing defeat, you need to be a giver. Because when you are a giver and you are a blessing, it has a way of opening doors for you. Because what you'll see all throughout scripture is you will see that God loves blessing people who will be a blessing to others. You'll see consistently throughout scripture that God loves givers. So Simon lets Jesus 
use his boat to preach. And after Jesus finished preaching to the crowd, guess what he does? Jesus turns his attention to Simon. After he turns his attention from the crowd, he turns his attention to Simon. And I need y'all to get this on today. Because Jesus, when he finished preaching, Jesus could have gone right on about his business. Because what he came to do, he was already doing it when he preached the word. So he could have told Simon, I've done what I needed to do. Man, I hope you catch some fish. I'll see you later. I'll pray for you. Y'all know how we are. Let me know if there's anything you need. Jesus could have done the same thing, but he turns his attention to Simon. So this lets you know that the God that you serve, that Jesus Christ does not want to see you defeated. Jesus Christ does not want to see you struggling. Jesus doesn't want to see you lacking. Jesus wants to see you win. Jesus cares too much to sit back and leave you on your own and you go through some of the stuff that you're going through by yourself. He wants to see you win. He cares about what you're going through. And I know sometimes we don't believe this, but not only does he care about what you're going through, but he wants to do something about what you're going through. Jesus desired to help Simon. That's why he finished preaching to the people and he had turned his attention to Simon and look at what he told Simon because he wanted to help. Look at verse 4. He says when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, he said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So he goes to Simon and he tells Simon, Simon, listen, I need you to go out further and I need your, you to uh, let your nets down deeper and then you're going to catch some fish. So Jesus tells Simon what to do and now at this point Simon is left with a decision. Either he listens and he obeys Jesus or he does not. And his next move or his next decision is absolutely critical because what he decides to do based off of what Jesus said is going to determine whether he continues to experience defeat or he gets his victory. Everything rides on Will Simon listen to Jesus? And y'all, I see this all the time, and I can't guarantee a lot of stuff, but I can guarantee this, that whatever Jesus is speaking to you right now, and whether you realize it or not, I'm telling you, he is speaking to you right now. Whatever Jesus is speaking to you right now, whatever he is laying on your heart in your moment of defeat and uncertainty, it is exactly what you need for your victory. It's exactly what you need for your victory. As a matter of fact, this is what we say. We always talk about a come up. Well, I came here to tell somebody his word is your come up. You're going to have to listen to what Jesus is saying. You're going to have to obey Jesus. There is no other way. Obedience is the only thing that is going to get you your victory. You have to listen and obey. That is the only thing that is going to get it done. I know we like to name it and claim it, but naming and claiming it ain't going to get it done. We, I know we, we, we like to say that I'm going to put it out there in the universe. And let me tell y'all something right now. As your pastor, I don't want anybody in this church to ever be talking about you're going to put it out in the universe. You put it out in the universe, God might not get it. The devil might get it. He in the universe too. Y'all better stop listening to all these folks. And I hate to be like this. Y'all better stop listening to all these folks talking about the universe. That's stupid. Why am I going to put it in a universe when I can put it in the hands of the one who created the universe? Out here fooling with all this mess because it sounds good. That's foolishness. Putting it in the universe ain't going to get it done. Manifesting it ain't going to get it done. The only thing that's going to get it done is listening and obeying. Y'all, I'm telling you. Y'all, I ain't playing with y'all. Y'all's past, don't you? Let me hear you talking about putting stuff out in the universe. 
I'm serious about that thing. Jesus, right now, he's telling you the right things to do, and you need to do it. He's trying to help you. Do you understand? He wants to help you. You need to listen to what he's telling you. And y'all, listen, I'm not going to sit back and act like it's easy. I'm not going to act like it's easy to listen and to obey Jesus Christ. A lot of times it's not easy because a lot of times what Jesus is telling you to do, it won't make any sense. It won't make any sense. Right here, what we're reading in Luke chapter 5, what Jesus is asking Simon to do, and I need y'all to stay with me, what Jesus is asking Simon to do, it makes absolutely no sense. Because what Jesus tells Simon to do is Jesus tells Simon to go out further and to cast your net down deeper, and then you'll catch some fish. You may not realize this, but what Jesus is saying is absolutely crazy because nobody would have done what Jesus is telling Simon. Nobody would have done it because as Jesus and Simon are talking, it is the daytime. And if you don't know anything about the Middle East, the Middle East gets hot. And I'm talking about hundreds of degrees of hot. And if you know anything about fishing, what happens is when the surface of the water gets hot, the fish go down deeper to be cool. And so what happens is when you cast your net out, you can't get no fish because they're down too deep. So nobody would have done this. If you were, were fishing on the Sea of Galilee, what was the custom? Or if you knew anything about fishing, what you would do is you would wait to nighttime to when the fish would come up and they would come in the shallow water, then you could cast your net out and get it. Nobody fished during the daytime. That's why as Simon is talking to Jesus, he's not out in the boat fishing, but he's washing out the nets. Because nobody did that. And here is Jesus telling Simon to, to do the opposite of what he knows. What Jesus is instructing Simon to do, it goes against everything that Simon has been taught. It goes against the way he's always done things and the way he's always fished. It goes against logic and it doesn't make any sense. But I want y'all to think about something that when God tells you something, when Jesus tells you something that doesn't make any sense, I want you to think about this. If you ever stop to think that maybe it doesn't make sense to you because Jesus knows more than you. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you because Jesus knows more than you. If somebody has more knowledge than you in a particular area and you are not at that level and you don't have that knowledge, when they begin to talk about those things you don't have, really have knowledge about, it can leave you confused and it won't make any sense. It's just like my wife. My wife, I ain't going to say nothing. Y'all thought I was going to say something bad. But my wife... She is fluent in Spanish. She has more knowledge than me about Spanish. So when she walks around the house and she tries to speak to me in Spanish, I tell her I don't really want to hear that. Just tell me that in English because it doesn't make sense to me. Right? She has more knowledge than me. And because she has more knowledge than me in certain, and when we talk about Spanish, it does not make sense to me. And can I let y'all know something? Jesus has way more knowledge than you. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I need to dig a little deeper because y'all think some folks smarter than y'all. Jesus has way more knowledge than a New York Times bestseller. Do you hear me on today? Jesus has way more knowledge than that person you follow on social media with millions of followers. Jesus knows more than them. So some of the things that Jesus tells you and he speaks over your life, it may not make sense to you, but you're just going to have to trust him. In the midst of you not understanding it and not making sense, you're going to have to trust Jesus. In other words, you're going to have to have faith. There's that big word. You're going to have to have 
faith in Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus is after. Jesus is after your faith. And it doesn't make sense to you because Jesus is not trying to build your knowledge, but he is trying to build your faith. So he's speaking to your faith and not to your head. So it's not making sense. Jesus wants to grow your faith. Because your faith is what's going to get you to victory. Your faith is the key to success. Your faith is what is going to cause you to overcome whatever you're dealing with on today. If you have enough faith to believe that you're going to come out. It's going to come out. And guess what faith is? Faith isn't in the known. Because if you know it, that ain't faith. If you know how it's going to turn out, that's not faith. So faith isn't in the known, but faith is in the unknown. In other words, faith is built up and faith is strengthened when you can't see your way out. Faith is strengthened and faith is produced when you don't know what to do next. Faith is, is produced when all you have to lean on is the word of God. I know we don't like it, but that's where faith is, and that's where faith grows when you get that doctor report and you don't know what to do next, and all you can do is call on the name of Jesus. I came here to tell some folks that what Jesus is asking you to do in this season of your life, it may challenge tradition, it may challenge what you have been taught, it's going to challenge your feelings, it is going to challenge your logic, and it may not make sense, but if you'll trust God and have faith, it may not make sense, but it is going to make a way. And you have to do it. You have to do what he's telling you to do. But guess what? You won't do what he's telling you to do if you think you know more than Jesus. You will not do what Jesus is telling you to do if you think you know more than Jesus. Pastor, that sounds absolutely crazy. I know it does. That's why you don't say it with your mouth, but you say it with your actions. He tell you to do something and you do the opposite. So basically what you're telling Jesus is I know more than you. You will not listen to Jesus if you think you know more than him. It is hard to listen to somebody that you think you know more than. It's hard to listen to somebody you think you know more than. Why do you think you wouldn't listen to your parents when you were younger sometimes? It was because your teenage ain't been through nothing, wet behind the ears, don't know nothing self, convinced yourself that you knew more than your parents. And when you convinced yourself that you knew more than your parents, guess what you did? You did what you thought you needed to do. You won't listen to anybody you think that you know more than. Whatever they tell you is going to go in one ear and out the other. Do you hear what I'm saying on today? You're not going to listen. You get to the point that some of y'all have said it. You can't tell me nothing. As a matter of fact, we get down on right offended when we when somebody tries to tell us something and we think we know more than them. Who you think you are? Do you know who I am? This is this is how we are. Because we think that we know everything. We even think that we know more than Jesus Christ. And have y'all noticed on today that everybody knows everything. Folks know so much, they know everything, and you can't tell them nothing. Folks walking around here with a big head because they think that they have all the knowledge in the world. And when I look around and I see what is going on in our world, and I see what is going on in our cities, and I see what's going on in our schools, and I see what's going on in our community, somebody lying. Because if you knew as much as you thought you knew, or if they knew as much as they say that they know, we wouldn't be going through some of the stuff that we're going through. If they knew everything, stuff wouldn't be as bad as it is. Oh, y'all, 
y'all better go around here and stop thinking you know everything and thinking everybody else knows everything. Do you hear me on today? And then right now, I'm smart enough to know there's some people right now, you saying to yourself that pastor don't know what he talking about. I know you are. How do I know you're saying it? Because you think you know everything. <laughs> right? It's going in one ear and out the other. He don't know what he's talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I don't know everything, but I do know this. That you don't know more than Jesus Christ. I mean, I can tell you much, but I can tell you this. Jesus knows more than you. Some of us, some of our biggest downfall is, is that can't nobody tell you nothing. But you don't know more than Jesus. Jesus knows more than you. I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care what you have accomplished. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you went to school and what your major is. I don't care how much money you make. You don't know more than Jesus. Jesus knows more than you. That is why you fail and he doesn't. Jesus knows more than you, and if you think or you convince yourself that you have more knowledge than Jesus, I came here to tell you, Jesus created you. And whatever knowledge that you have, he gave you the ability to get that knowledge. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus knows more than you. See, you guess he knows. You guess he knows. And I don't know about the God that y'all serve, but the God that I serve, he's so much bigger than the six inches between your ears. The God that I serve, you can't figure him out. The God that I serve, you can't wrap your mind around because my word says the God that I serve, he's alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus knows everything. And while our hard-headed, don't-know-nothing self is trying to figure it out, he's already figured it out. And if you would understand that Jesus knows more than you, not only has he figured it out, but he'll start to work it out. Jesus knows more than you. And until, you, until that gets through to you, neither will victory. You're going to keep experiencing defeat in your life. Jesus knows more than you. You have to get that. Simon got this. Simon got it. And, and, I, know, and I know it was hard for Simon to humble himself in this situation because I want to dig a little deeper in this thing because guess what? Jesus was a carpenter by trade. Jesus was a carpenter by trade, and Simon was the fisherman. So from the outside looking in and from what we know, Simon should have been telling Jesus what to do, not the other way around. Because Jesus had, excuse me, because Simon had the knowledge. He was supposed to know more than Jesus. As a matter of fact, Simon could have said, and he, and he would have been right about it, Simon could have said, Jesus, you need to worry about wood and you need to worry about the word. Because what you're telling me don't make sense. Ain't nobody going to do this. But that is not what Simon did. When Jesus told him to go out further and let down his nets deeper, look at what Simon said. Verse 5. I'm about to close this thing out. I feel like preaching on this morning. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Simon responded to what Jesus was saying. Simon said, Jesus, we have worked all night. In other words, Simon was telling Jesus, we tied. I'm talking about, I'm talking about tied without the all. 
that's when you show enough tired, when you're tired. He said, Jesus, I, I, I'm tired. And, 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 and he's saying to himself, Jesus, what you're saying doesn't really make any sense. But Jesus, if you say so, I will do it. He said, I, 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 I'll do it if you say so. I'll go back out and I'll try these unconventional methods if you say so. Yes, Simon is tired. And yes, Jesus is talking crazy. But see, this is where Simon's faith kicked in. he never seen this done before. He didn't know how it was going to turn out. But his experience said that it wouldn't. But his faith said, Jesus knows more than me. And Jesus, if you say for me to do it, I'll do it. He didn't have any proof that it would work. All he had was Jesus' word. And his faith said, your word is enough and I'll do it. He said, it doesn't make sense, but I'll make moves because my faith says, you know more than me. And I came here to talk to some folks on today. I came here to talk to you. God has you here on today because I came to tell you something that if you're dealing with defeat on today, I need you to know that whatever Jesus is telling you, you need to do it. You may not be able to wrap your mind around it, but by faith, just step out on his word. You need to let your faith rise up higher than your need to understand. You need to let your faith rise up higher than all that knowledge and information that you have in your head so you can say to yourself Jesus knows more than me Jesus knows more than you on today so I need you to trust him and if you trust him you might be dealing with defeat now but I came in to tell you you won't be dealing with defeat for much longer as a matter of fact I feel like preaching on this morning I feel like preaching the spirit of the Lord is moving in this place. I need some people right now. I need just a few folks who has some because he said so faith. Is it anybody in this place that has some because he said so faith? I can't see it, but I'll do it because he said so. They told me no, but I'll do it because he said so. I don't have the money, but I'll do it because he said so. I don't have control over this thing, but I'll do it because he said so. I don't have any connections, but I'll do it because he said so. I'm tired and I'm weary and I'm about to give up, but I'll do it because he said so. Hallelujah. Do you have some because he said so faith? I don't care what your situation says, but will you do it because he said so? You got to do what he's saying on today. But I came in to tell you something about the God that you serve. Whatever he is speaking over your life, I came to tell you that his word will not return back void. His word will not return back void. So if he said you can do it, you can do it. If he said go back out, go back out. Because Jesus has the ability to speak over your life. And whatever he's speaking, it has to line up with his word. If Simon would have been like some of us, he would have been like some of us. If he would have thought that he knew more than Jesus like we do, he would have remained defeated like we do.
could have said, Jesus, this doesn't make sense to me. I'm just not going to do it. No, that doesn't make any sense. Jesus knows more than you. By faith, Simon said, I know I'm a fisherman. And he's a carpenter. But I believe he knows more about my situation than I do. I know what I know. And I know what I see. But I'm going to believe your word. And I want to close with this. He said, I'm tired. But I'm going to do it. And look at what happens next. And it says in verse 6, and when they had done this, in other words, when they were obedient to Jesus Christ and his word, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. In the same day, Simon went from dealing with defeat to dealing with victory. To dealing with overflow, he went from empty nets and an empty boat to full nets to the point that they were about to break to a full boat so full that it said that they began to sink. All because he believed that Jesus knows more than me and I will do what he says. Do you see the power? Of your Savior on today? He's able to defy logic. He's able to overcome statistics. He's able to overcome your deficiencies. He's able to do the impossible. That is the God that you serve. And he is not asking you to go out here and be perfect. He's not asking you to jump through hoops. All he's asking you is I just need you to believe what I'm telling you. And I need you to do it. Jesus knows more than you about your own situation. Jesus knows more about you than you know about you. His word says that he knows your need even before you ask. So what that tells me is that I'm going through something and Jesus is not only with me, but he's in my future. And he says, I'm moving this in Fred's favor. And I'm moving this in Fred's favor because I know what he needs. And if you'll be obedient, you're going to experience some things that you've never experienced before. If you will be obedient and listen, you're going to go from not enough to more than enough. I don't know about y'all, but too much is a good problem to have. you believe that on today? I told y'all y'all look real good, but this is what I also know. I know that some of us are out here struggling. That we're dealing with defeat. And I don't want you to think this the first thing. I got money in the bank. I know. I know. But that ain't what I'm talking about. 
I need y'all to hear me on today. Some of y'all are tired and you can't figure out why. If I, can just, I, just need, I, I just need to get me some rest. I get it because I say it. And you get the rest and you're still tired. If I could just get me a little sleep, I'd be able to figure it out and you still ain't figured it out. I tell y'all something on today. It's not your body that's tired, it's your soul that's tired. And what Jesus is telling you to do, it is not only going to benefit you physically and in the natural, but it is more so going to benefit you spiritually. It is going to feed your soul. So that you can finally rest. Jesus knows more than you. So trust in him today. I want to pray. sing with me right quick. We're going to pray in a minute. I know nothing about that song. But daddy will use to tear a church up. Sometimes it's just good to go back to the old school lane. Say it, 
y'all gonna get me shouting up here this morning? Y'all stop messing with me. We got to pray. We got to pray. Father, we, we come to you right now. Father, we, we need you. Father, we need you to step in right now. Father, we need you to, to work right now. Because we're going through some things that people don't even know about. We're going through some things that's bringing us to our knees. But this is what I believe. That it has brought us to a good place. It has put us on our knees. It's where we need to be because we need to pray. And we're praying right now. And we're calling on your name. We're calling on the mighty name of Jesus. Father, there's some defeats because we're calling on the name of Jesus that's going to have to stop. There's some things that we're dealing with and that we're going through that it's going to have to stop because we're calling on your name. We seek you right now. Give us direction. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, give us faith. Help us to see what we can't see right now. Help us to believe what, what has not been manifested in the earth yet. Increase our faith so that we believe that you are a God who is able. So that we can believe that you are bigger than what we're going through. Help our faith to rise up higher than I doubt. Speak to us right now. And Father, even if it doesn't make sense, we're still going to do it. Even if we don't understand, we're still going to do it because we believe that you love us and you have our best interest in mind. right now in the precious name of Jesus there is depression in this place we bind it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ there are identity issues in this place people don't know who they are they have low self esteem God we bind that in the name of Jesus Christ I know there have been thoughts of suicide we bind them right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Father, even for some of us, there's a spirit of rebellion in us. We bind it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Help us to submit to you. Help us to humble ourselves before you. sickness in this place we bind it right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ 
There's somebody in this place you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Father, provide for them right now in the precious name of Jesus. There are some people who lost some things in this place. God, we speak restoration right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. We say that it is done. We say that it is fixed. Because we ask in your son's precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Can we give Jesus a hand on today? could have said it, but I shut it on down. Thank y'all for allowing me to speak to you on today. I hope that you enjoyed it. We're going to continue in this series, Dealing with Defeat. I, I at least got one more. I don't know what he's going to speak, but I at least got one more. And if you enjoyed it on today, y'all do something for me. Don't keep what's going on in this place to yourself. Invite somebody to come out. It ain't for my ego. I just know people need it. Because y'all know I am. I'm going to preach to one or one thousand. But I want to see people blessed, and I believe that the church is the place where they can be blessed. Amen. So invite somebody out here so they can hear what's going on in this place and they can feel love. Because some people, y'all would be surprised at how many people think right now that nobody loves them. They need to be in this place so they can experience the love of Jesus Christ. We love them, we minister to them, and they're going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Man, y'all are some. Some good folks. I don't think it's a better church in the country to pastor. That's just my personal opinion. Y'all are some good folks, man. I love. If some listen, if y'all, if it's some testimonies you got going on, y'all let me know. I love to hear how God is is blessing you. I love to hear how your family is doing. My man Lance, he told me, I, uh, I got so excited today, he told me my man Landon caught his first touchdown on yesterday. My man. Heard Miss Riley back there, I see you Riley. I heard that you got three goals on yesterday. We got some athletes in this place. We got some scholars in this place. Everything is happening, man. Y'all let me know about that stuff. I like to celebrate with y'all because I love y'all and I know that y'all love me. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all keep praying for me, okay? I pray God's blessings over you and your family. I speak God's protection over you because we need it in this world that we live in. But I believe that he's going to cover your family, your friends, and your loved ones in his blood. And everything is going to be all right. I can't wait to see y'all on next Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. Love y'all. Goodbye.